You're going to tell me when you've pressed the Zoom recording button? Yes, uh, it has been. Oh, okay, thanks. Um, the appointed hour, five o'clock, having been reached, I welcome everyone to the meeting of the Amherst Design Review Board. My name is Catherine Porter. As chair of the Amherst Design Review Board, I call this meeting to order. Pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, GLC 30A, section, eight, section 18, and the governor's March 15, 2020 order imposing strict limitations on the number of people that may gather at one place, this public hearing of the town of Amherst Design Review Board is being conducted via remote participation. No in-person attendance of members of the public will be permitted, but the public can attend tonight's virtual meeting by using the Zoom lo login information provided on the meeting agenda listed on the meeting calendar, which provided on the town of Amherst website. We will begin with a roll call of the members of the design review board who have been impaneled for the consideration of the items on tonight's agenda. Board members, please indicate I when I call your name. Uh, Lindsay Schnarr. Hi. Okay. Uh, Erica Zekos is not here. Uh, Janet Marquard will be here soon. And so we have Tom Long. Are you here, Tom? Hi. Okay. Also in attendance is Maureen Paula, planner and staff liaison to the design review board. The design review board and the accompanying zoning regulations were created by town meeting in October, 1983. The charge and purpose of the design review board under section 3.2 of the zoning bylaw is to preserve and enhance the town's cultural, economic, and historical resources by providing for a detailed review of all changes in land use, the appearance of structures, and the appearance of sites which may affect these resources. The Design Review Board exercises this responsibility by providing design review and recommendations to private applicants and permit granting boards within specific overlay zoning districts in the town center, the design review overlay district and the town common design review overlay district. Design review is also provided for town departments and permit granting boards with respect to town projects anywhere in Amherst, which will result in substantial alter alteration to the form of appearance or of a structure or site. All design review board meetings are open to the public and are recorded by town staff. Each meeting recorded will be uploaded to the Town of Amherst YouTube channel for public viewing. The procedure is as follows. The petitioner presents the application to the board during the meeting after which the board will ask questions for clarification or additional information. Also the board has completed its, after the board has completed its questions, the board will deliberate. If the board feels it has enough information and time, it will decide upon recommendations for each respective application. Once the board has voted on its recommendations, the staff liaison will type up the recommendations for distribution to the applicant board, applicable land use board and building commissioner. Okay, so tonight we have two applications and uh, Maureen, shall we just go ahead and uh, begin? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so the uh, the first application is for the proposed bus shelters and we have um, Ben, um, Ber Ber how do you say your last name? <laughs> Breger. Breger, thank you. Yeah. Uh, Bre Breger. Okay. I, I haven't had a chance to say your last name a lot. Yeah. <laughs> um, I believe the DRB members um, have met Ben. Right, yeah, through the website. Yeah. yeah, so. Uh, yeah, so Ben is going to talk to you guys about the the locations and the aesthetics related to the bus shelters. Okay. Take it away, Ben. Great. Thanks, Maureen. Yeah, and thank you all for uh, short taking the time to have this meeting. I know it was short notice, but um, appreciate it. 
being able to organize quickly. So I'm going to share my screen here, um, put together a short little presentation. Okay. Um, so just a little bit of background on this project. Yeah. Um, yeah. The town, um, we applied for a grant from MassDOT and that was, uh, it's called the Shared Streets and Spaces Grant. And that was um, a grant really focused on, um, you know, COVID-19 related impacts to the street and uh, allowing towns to, you know, do quick implementation projects where they could create more space for pedestrians, uh, for people to eat outside and be able to enjoy, you know, a town center with social distancing and, um, being able to kind of just, you know, yeah, I mean, uh, renewed commerce was one of the focuses. So like um, with this grant, we were able to, we uh, slightly realigned North Pleasant Street and were able to bump out some of the Jersey barriers. Um, we got uh, more heaters for downtown, but also part of this grant was money for new bus shelters um, because that's something that DOT uh, really wants to fund. And also, you know, we noticed how there were a few bus, pretty high ridership bus stops in the center of town that don't have bus shelters at the moment. Um, and in our conversations with PVTA, you know, they've been trying to fill every stop they have with shut with a shelter because, you know, it's a place where people congregate and wait for a bus. And it's, you know, we do live in New England and there's a lot of harsh weather. And so having the opportunity to stay out of the rain or wind or snow um, while you're waiting for the bus is important. So that's a little bit of background. Um, this is, and I will note, um, this is typically not how bus shelters are procured for the town. Typically it's something that PBTA and DPW really take care of. Um, and so, you know, I'm in the planning department with Maureen. And so because we got the grant, um, you know, PBTA, they have their hands full right now. So at first we offered like, oh, can we just give you the money and then you can do what you do and just get the get the bus shelters. But um, because of the quick deadline and the time the timeline for this grant, you know, the uh, DOT is going to we have to spend the money by the end of the year, essentially. So PVTA was just like, you know, um, we can help you. We're there for you. Any questions you have, but we'd like for you as the town to be the ones to get the bus shelters. And so that then came back to me. And, and so I'm working with PBTA to um, find the specs for the shelters that they typically put in Amherst. Um, and so I'm coming to you today because basically I have noticed that there's multiple different types of bus shelters in downtown Amherst. They're all kind of a variation on the same theme of like this Victorian shelter, but I think there's a lot of different details um that you know should need to be worked out and I'll, I'll talk about what those kind of different specs are so that's the sorry that was a long long story short is that that's kind of why i'm why i'm coming to you today so um let me make this can i make this full screen or do you guys see this okay let me just um so um whoops so yeah, the existing bus shelters in downtown Amherst. Um, I got the specs from PVTA. So the next three slides are all like the actual um, documents, uh, draw drawings themselves. And then I have actual pictures, but just to give you a sense of the details, um, they're all this kind of Victorian style. Um, this version has like a latticed, like grill kind of thing, metalwork on the bottom which is kind of differentiates it from the other ones. Um, this shelter kind of has that same lattice grill, but the uh, glass itself is um, has some pattern to it and is, um, I think, a little bit darker in color. You'll see an example of this shelter. Um, and then this is the same thing, but without the grill. So there's kind of these different details um, within each shelter. So yeah, this is, this is, um, the shelter that has the window, um, or sorry, the the kind of pattern on the glass, and it's a little bit less transparent. Um, this is across from the commons, um, 
And so one of the proposed shelters is going to be on the other side of the street, kind of at the um, on, on the commons uh, where there's a Peter Pan bus stop, but no shelter. Um, the next one, this is at the post office downtown, um, a high ridership shelter or bus stop um, with a shelter. And so this has the lattice um, metalwork on the bottom. And then this is a uh, kind of across from Kendrick Park downtown. Um, and this is kind of just a standard bus shelter. This one has like a, a map um, insert. Uh, the window is open for some reason, but you know, this can close and, and PVTA likes to put information in these little display cases. And then um, this picture, this is actually way down in South Amherst um, in Croc near Crocker Farm. And I just drove by this and I was like, oh, a new, a new type of bus shelter downtown, or sorry, a new bus type of bus shelter in town. And what, what was different about this one is, is it actually has a solar panel on it um, and a small LED light in the, mid, uh, in the center of the shelter somewhere here. And so um, that's something that PVTA mentioned was like an add-on that, that we could, um, include in our new shelters um so not this is i think one of the only ones in amherst that has the solar panel and the light you know it's not hooked up to the grid at all so the light is powered by the solar panel here but um it's a neat way to kind of um have light in the shelter um which we think is important so just a consideration i think i i would have to look closely at the proposed locations in downtown and whether there would actually be a night enough light to power the um, light that's in here. So, um, but I just wanted to give you a visual of what that solar panel might look like if we decide to go that route. Um, and then this is the one at town hall, kind of this is main street right here. And this is, as PBTA told me this shelter is at least 25 years old and has not been replaced in a while. So um, we're proposing, um, you know, uh, to if we have enough money to get, you know, three shelters, um, that this would be a priority to replace um, because it's pretty worn down and is also at the center of town. Um, so I just want, to, I think this is this is the old model. It has this kind of bubble roof to it um and then i just included this to show you guys a visual of um kind of the contemporary model that is dotted around mostly around the umass campus and this is something that you know for when, when a new shelter is placed placed in like the town center or the village centers pbta usually lets us decide that they defer to us what we want to decide but the um shelters that are in and around the UMass campus. Typically they go with this more contemporary design. Um, but I just, so I just wanted to show you that. And this is not what we're proposing for the town center, but just as an example of the different types of shelters. Um, and then I wanted to present this idea, which um, hopefully this doesn't complicate things too much, but um, PVTA wants to include a display case within the shelter. Um, and this would be like a custom made uh, item. So what you're seeing here, this is actually at Pulaski Park in Northampton. Um, and so, you know, this is a different style shelter, different size, but all I really wanted to show you was the display case that you see, this is within the shelter. Um, and this is what it looks like from the back. And so I got the specs from PBTA about actually um, this would this would what this is what it would look like if it was in portrait um, orientation, and it kind of just like goes up against the shelter and fits within one of the panes on the side. And so, um, this is a opportunity for you know PVTA to um, have a digital display that they can change um, in real time, and it provides real time bus you know information about when to expect certain you know, buses coming in and out. Um, and so, it, but it does have a visual impact because it protrudes out the side of the shelter ever so slightly. Um, and, but it, you know, it would be painted black um, and kind of blend in with the uh, 
with the profile as well. So um, we might propose this for the uh, high ridership shelter, uh, bus shelter that's at St. Bridget's Church, um, which is one of the locations that we're looking at. So just wanted to give you that um, details. And then finally, I, I realized I probably should have started with this, um, but just to guys, give you a sense of the, our priority um, areas for, for, for bus shelters. Um, so number one is Coles Lane, where St. Bridget's Church is. Um, number two is on the town commons um, at the intersection of like the Spring Street parking lot and the commons. Mm -hmm. And then three is the town hall, um, Main Street kind of parking lot. And so number one and two, there's, there's a bus stop there, but no shelter. And then number three is the one I showed you where it's a, there, there's a bus stop there and a shelter, but it's in a poor condition. So we're proposing to replace that. Um, and so I went, I made some um, site plans for what, how we think we could um, put a shelter, fit a shelter into the various locations. Um, and so the standard PVTA shelter, the, that Victorian model is 11 feet long by um, like just under five feet deep. So that's what you see here in, in the kind of turquoise color. You can zoom in on this, whoops. Um, and just to orient, whoops, uh, just to orient you, you know, St. Bridget's Church is over here. Um, and so, you know, you'd go this way towards town and up towards UMass. Um, and so, you know, Maureen and I actually, um, we, you know, we want, we also wanted to make sure these things were AD, those sh the shelters and the, the stops and the whole site plan, they were, they were ADA compliant. Um, so one of the things we looked at was, um, you know, making sure there was a six foot clearance from the onloading area of the bus to the sidewalk. So that's something we, we um, wanted to make sure of. And so um, what you see here is kind of uh, that six foot wide um, just pathway. Um, there's nothing there. And then the shelter could fit here. And, you know, we also, there also needs to be at least five feet between the shelter and the road, which is what you see here. Um, and so this is, the sidewalk as well. Um, so there'd be a little bit of site work required here. These bike racks would need to be removed. Um, and you'll see that here. Um, so this is, you know, St. Bridges Church is here. Um, these are the bike racks um, that would need to be removed. And then I went ahead and used PowerPoint just to kind of show what it looks like to, um, to have like that Victorian style shelter there. And it would be somewhere yeah, it, it would kind of be in start in between these bike racks and move to where that recycling is. And so there's a parking spot right here. So typically, you know, there could very well be a car here and the PVTA bus would stop where the sign is and there would, there would have be room for people to come in and out of the bus and then um, wait over here. Um, trying to think if there's anything else for this area. You know, the, <clears throat> this, is, this is where, um, there's at least three different kind of um, bus systems that come through here. So there's there's the B43 bus, which goes from Northamp to Amherst and Northampton. Um, there's a bus that goes to and from Holyoke that stops here. And then there's like at least like five different um, local buses that come through here. So this is a very busy bus stop and it's um you know I've, it's really important uh, that there's a shelter here um you know uh for for all the people that wait here um and so because it's like one of the highest highest ridership bus stops in amherst this is where pvta would want to see that display case mm -hmm. um and so i proposed it you know it makes sense to be on the uh facing away from the direction of traffic so if you're waiting for the bus here the bus is coming this way you don't want that sign to like block your view of the oncoming bus. So I'm, I'm saying it should be on this side. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, I'll just, um, I'm gonna talk now about the, uh, the one on the commons and then we can um, maybe just discuss the details of each bus stop um, separately. But this is, um, 
just to orient you, we're on the other side of downtown. Um, this is the Spring Street parking lot. Um, you know, Hastings is somewhere over here. Um, and so this bus stop, this is, um, again, you know, the, 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 the Peter Pan, this is the inbound stop for the Peter Pan bus. So this is where people get dropped off as they're coming into town. Um, this is also a bus stop for the B43, as well as multiple <coughs> local um, buses. And, um, and so there's, there's a, a, oh, I, oh I, I meant to include a picture of this, but for those of you who have lived in Amherst for a while, there used to be a yellow information booth here that was, yeah. I think, run by what, like the Chamber of Commerce or the Visitor Center. Um, but so there, there is kind of a history of there being a structure at the corner here. And there's actually some uh, evidence of like a, a concrete pad still being there. Um, I think that was removed maybe in the early 2010s. It's, it's been a while. Yeah, um, I, I remember when that was removed. Was yeah. Big to do. Yeah, yeah, certainly. And, it, and it's actually, uh, it's currently at the Gillen Farm in, in uh, or Sunset Farm, I think, which is in near the center of town, they use it as their farm stand now, just a fun fact. Um, so yeah, similar to before, you know, there, um, there's an area for people to get in on, on and off the bus from the sidewalk. The, uh, this would involve the construction, basically, or more, more so the extension of a concrete pad um, to fit the, uh, you know, this would be an 11 by five shelter. Um, I'm giving you a little bit of a sneak preview of uh, the next presentation um, with Brianna. And um, because Brianna is uh, proposing these informational signs and one of her proposed locations is at this corner. Um, and so you'll get more details from Brianna about what those signs are and what they look like. But I just wanted to say like, you know, we're working together and in conjunction. And um, if we decide to put one of Brianna's, they're called SUFA signs here, then we could extend this concrete pad and it could fit right here. Um, so um, again, I also did a quick little PowerPoint rendering of what the shelter might look like. This is, um, you know, the concrete pad would extend uh, back here and down a little bit. Um, and so I made sure to still leave this corner, you know, if I'm, you know, if people, I do this too, if you're going to the farmer's market, you might cut through this corner. So I made sure to leave this um, corner open. Um, and so kind of pushing the concrete pad uh, further sou south, that would be, yeah. Um, and then again, it would be something like that. Um, and so this, this is just, my quick little mock-up of what the informational sign looks like. You'll, you'll get more details about that. Um, and so, yeah, I think um, my kind of questions for you guys are, you know, I'm assuming we want to stick with this Victorian theme for the um, bus shelters downtown. And so I was just looking for some help on, you know, uh, what makes sense in terms of different uh, features and variations on this theme, whether there's that lattice metal work, whether we want the glass to be more transparent, less transparent, um, you know, solar panel sticking off here, is, is that gonna look too cluttered or is that um, the right idea? So um, yeah, and I guess, you know, to a certain extent at both locations, we're limited on location, you know, and specifically within here. Um, because of, you know, site furniture and trees, but um, if you have any um, uh, recommendations for, you know, slight adjustments for the locations um, within these areas, that would be helpful as well. So, yeah, and let me know if anything was unclear or if you need uh, clarification okay. for anything, so. Can I ask a number of questions? Yeah. Um, on the map, you show this on the other side of the street, but there is one on that side of the street. So you just have the dot off slightly, right? Yeah, yep, yeah, yeah. So it's on, on the, side the east of the side of the street. Okay. Yeah. Also, why sometimes does the shelter face out and sometimes it faces the other way 
if you've ever waited for a bus, you want to yeah. have it being like this, so you can see whether the bus is coming. There's all these ones that are turned the other way, and you, you have to like crane your crane your neck all yeah. You know, yeah. the bus is coming. And that's the way you had the one in front of St. Bridges set. Oh, well, that, that wasn't drawing. my intention. That wasn't my intention. At least your drawing looked like that, maybe yeah. not. But you're planning to have them like this open to the street, right? Okay. Yeah, yeah, certainly. Yeah, I think it's it's probably usually an ADA type thing where like you need um, hard surface like a sidewalk or something in front of the shelter, and sometimes there's not enough room on the uh, street facing side. Okay. But yeah. in these instances, yeah, it's they'll be. One in South street. Amherst on West is has the solar panel because that's the only area that isn't already lit by lights. This oh. area here. There's lights in town. Yeah, and it's you true. Really it. yeah. That is so you can find the shelter and you're lit while you're in there. Yeah. I don't think we really need the more light in these areas downtown. Yeah, it's true. There's a there's a light pole like right here, right off the screen. Um, right. And there's, and there's one, one here. Yeah, there's one yeah. right there. And across the street. Yeah. Um, in fact, it's very light there because I've met the Peter Pan bus many times and it's it's quite light. Yeah. Off right there. Um, as far as the design goes, it seems to me that this style roof is smarter with snow, the more pitch than those flat, flatter ones. Um, the uh, grate or the grid uh, at the bottom, I don't know how attractive it is, but it certainly reinforces the structure yeah. uh, in a way that this doesn't. And any number of things can happen to these structures. Um, yeah. So the better reinforcement they have seems to me makes sense and then in the summer or at a time when the sun is coming low having that glass that's um etched in those that um pattern yeah. helps a lot if you're in a bus shelter and the sun is pouring in the window either you're trying to look the direction the sun is coming or it's just hot and these are more comfortable to wait in mm -hmm. So those are all my points. Yeah, yeah. Are there going to be benches? In, do I see a bench in this one here? Yeah, or, yeah. Yeah, gonna, we would we would include have a bench. benches inside. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And um, I think yeah, another thing Maureen and I were conscious of for ADA is to have like a I think it it's like a thirty by forty eight rectangle kind of next to the bench for a wheelchair. So it's it uh -huh. wouldn't kind of like you see here. Yeah, it wouldn't uh -huh. extend all the way. Uh -huh. But yeah. How would you power those graphic signs that um, they want? So that's like a detail I haven't fully worked out with DPW. Um, sorry, uh, doo -doo -doo. At, at Pulaski Park in Northampton, it's um, hardwired into oh. the um, street, kind of like the same conduit that the street lights use. Um, so there would be some electrical work and connection um, to, to get it into the street as well. I hate to have the view in front of St. Bridget's cluttered up too much because that's one of our real architectural beauties in town. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. A lot of people photograph that and it, it just, it's a really attractive view downtown and the bus shelter already is going to mess up that view. And then if we start having, you know, things wired into the street and I don't know, there's a lot, it just adds more and more and more stuff in front of that, you know, mm -hmm. so. Do you possibly slide it just a little bit further down toward the tree box? Because you had kind of shown it just taking up the one spot of the bike rack. Maybe it shifts all the way down and then the bike racks. Was there an intention to relocate the bike racks? Yeah, yeah. The, the, this whole area between, there's like a tree pit here and then one further south. Um, and there's really no street furniture there. So, you know, the bike racks could move there or, um, you know, somewhere else yeah certainly yeah and moving it further away from the facade Lindsay, is yeah. a good idea yeah so the the width between the bus shelter and the tree pit uh there is at three that's three feet and so that that that's considered an aisle you have to yeah. have both sides not just one side um well you know th so some of these buses are are double buses i don't know how you yeah so there are there's people coming the out the back yeah yeah and actually yeah maureen remember we have that picture or when we were here we saw um 
as it currently is now like the back door of the bus just like lets people out into the tree pit like it's not yeah. a great oh. situation yeah Would you go um, a bit further north and be on the other side of that tree pit well no uh because there's parking spots here so oh. really the and bus actually driveway. Yeah. yeah that's yeah. south i'm talking about north or yeah. oh yeah well Col cole's lane is also yeah. right here yeah. so yeah, i don't know yeah. if you ever it's a yeah it's a tough spot like already um when there's like one of the double buses there it block it yeah. that alone blocks cole's lane like they're yeah yeah you know, this is maybe a conversation for another time but um and you know but you know if we were to remove a parking spot or two it could move everything south and allow better queuing of the buses and yeah but but we're not right in the front of the church yeah yeah we're not ready to go there yet so and also if you put that graphic thing in with the lit screen i mean that's even worse in terms of clutter in front of that building mm -hmm. you know that seems gonna be on all the time right lit. um oh. yeah. yeah so uh, what are your thoughts about, although it'd be kind of weird if you had a different bus shelter type in downtown, but how about the contemporary bus shelter? Would that no, I, sort of blend in better instead of the black? No. Okay, good. Because I think it would be kind of odd. If there was yeah. I think yeah. the goal should be to try if the shelters across from one another and maybe yeah to be the same rather and I mean, you've got a gabled building behind it so it'd be kind of yeah. weird yeah yeah i, don't I will say there. that ben ben has spent a lot of time out <laughs> here and 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 i went out with him once of we became sort of like bus people of what <laughs> yeah. of once you start i don't know starting paying attention yeah. to the the street furniture and then um each bus has their each bus driver has their own subtlety of where they stop <laughs> uh, and then the different types of buses i did i do think that while i hear your point janet is a very beautiful location we don't want to disturb that i think that um there are often a lot of people that gather at this location um mm -hmm. as it is uh, because it's such a heavily used bus stop and having a kind of a contained shelter, as long as it's shifted as far toward that um, tree on the right side of this picture as possible, given the size that it is, I think that there's still adequate space to, um, to photograph, to get kind of behind it, to get nice angles. I mean, I, I personally have taken photographs of that church too, and I'm imagining that even with that shelter there, as long as it's shifted toward the right as far as possible, that there would still be plenty of vantage points to be able to capture um, and take in that lovely site. And I actually think it might in some ways kind of clean it up, just giving people a place to, to gather, so. No, I don't have any problem with that. I'm just saying to have that lighted um, information yeah. screen, yeah. I think would be, I don't know, just sort of glaringly. Yeah, I mean, that that's something that we could always add on to the uh, post office shelter across the street, because that's just as yeah. big as, as this one. Yeah. Um, and at the very least, um, we might add like a embedded like um, map like display that's like, you know, flush with the glass and, yeah. you know, is, it just shows all the different routes that the come schedule, through. Schedule, probably. Yeah, too. the schedules. Yeah. yeah. Well, I want to make a pitch for the information screen, though, because I think that there's something. Um... Is that Erica? Yeah, sorry, I'm late. I, oh. I, I late. Oh, nice. Perhaps you've had this conversation already, so forgive me if I'm because of my lateness. I've missed an important point, but um, the information screen is something that's um, updatable. So if there's emergency information or changes to the bus route because of snow, right? Like, there's a way to communicate that's um, timely and accessible um, and won't rely as heavily on the taped up flyers that you know we see are old and out of date or there's tape yeah. residue all over the surface or there are, somebody's like pinned something up and it's all askew <laughs> and somebody else has to come and take it down like is this a way to streamline information delivery in a timely way for residents of Amherst and bus users? Um, and is it also a way to kind of gather and organize the kind of information that people tend to look for when they're in the bus? Yeah. 
I doubt if it's going to control all those flyers because those flyers say absolutely everything from <laughs> lost dog to you know rummage sale. So I don't know that that. Yeah, panel... even looking at the examples that we've shown, a lot of those flyers are from the town or from PD. Yeah. Yeah, 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 true. yeah, and things like that. And yeah. um, and you know, you're only planning on putting one in that location on one side of the street, yeah. not both sides of the street, weird. right? Um, the display case. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would be. It would probably be one or one or the other. Yeah. Um, it's very sort of I mean, random. That's kind of weird. It's like uh -huh. if you're going north, you get it, but not if you're going south <laughs> or something. Right, yeah. You know. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think it's easier to do when you're getting a new shelter because they would be um, right. the fabricator would kind of just do do both yeah. at once. And, PB, um, and PBTA maintains that, right? It's up to them then to their the, they pro they program it. Yeah. They, yeah. It's, now, yeah. when you say do you really mean glass or is it plexiglass? Those shelters aren't really glass, are they? Um, yeah, it's it's tempered glass. Tempered glass. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. You don't want glass. You don't want plexiglass. Yeah. Um, yeah. And uh, yeah, one thing they said was like, you know, whatever shelter you get, you can order order like order uh, extra window pa panes. You know, already ma made made uh -huh. to the same size because they just in case just like to have them. Yeah, uh, yeah ready to go for if there's any broken. Well, I glass. like Dan's suggestion about having the the lower grid. I think that yep. makes yeah. a lot of sense. Yeah, and that, sorry, I'm just going to go to the post office one. This is across the street, so yeah, it'll I match up that with that. Match, yeah. 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 But, the, yeah. but the patterned glass, I think, is a good idea myself. Uh -huh. I've spent a lot of time waiting for buses in Europe. Yeah. I would, and so, I would think it's for um, the patterned glass on the common, but I think here you're covered by a lot of trees, and if you want to minimize the impact on the view of, of uh, well, that's true. the building to keep it transparent would work in that particular case. So uh, I, I know we match. You could be getting south light would be covered a lot of the time. Um, I don't know. You know, the trees are doing a pretty good job. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. Yeah, good point. So maybe here and not have that. Right. And it would match yeah. across the street. Yeah. Well, I, I definitely think they should be identical if they're across the street. Yeah. Um, yeah, certainly. Just because we've got already enough hodgepodge in this town. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know. What is everyone's thoughts about a uh, pattern glass for the uh, Spring Street location and then Main Street? Um. Yeah, and just yeah, as a I reminder, that, that and, yeah. and and yeah, to Tom's point, this is across the street from the one that we would put on the commons, okay. so th yeah. that would also nice match. match. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But I still think that the lower grid thing is a reinforcement that makes sense. Yeah. To glass. And so I believe, sorry, I'm just going to scroll around a little bit. One of the specs I had, yeah, this one. I, mm -hmm. I didn't have an actual picture of this, I don't think, but it, they're, they're, this is one of the models they have, which is both. It has the pattern glass and the metal work on the bottom. So mm -hmm. it does seem possible, yes. Okay. <laughs> so if I hear everyone, um, so for the, main, for the Spring Street Self Pleasant one, it would be a pattern like this, but you guys still would uh, prefer to have the lower grid. I would, I, but my my only word of caution around that is that it kind of, we are talking about um, that we already have quite a variety of designs, and that adds a layer of specificity to the design. It's not that I have anything against that particular design. It's just that it um, it's it's a design feature that's very. Uh, noticeable and specific and so if there's an interest in trying to make these as consistent as possible it's just that's just one factor to consider yeah. but so maybe leave these two uh, similar uh, and then the one across in the post office maybe the grid could go there because the post office has a grid or you're saying let's eliminate as many grids as possible <laughs> yeah I don't yeah well, just from a construction standpoint, I think they are a good idea. And Ben, this is an example of one that's turned back. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And I, I don't understand it. I mean, I've dropped my daughter there many times, and I don't see why a person has to face away from the street yeah. to wait for the bus. I, I, I think wonder if it comes back to the three-foot clearance on the street. It does. Yeah. 
Yeah. yeah. I, I, we actually talked to. Um, oh, because it would be on the sidewalk if it were. Yeah, and so that the width of that sidewalk probably just doesn't meet is not wide enough to provide the entryway to the shelter um, mm -hmm. to face the roadway. We actually spoke to uh, Ben and I spoke to an ADA um, consultant about this. Um, and I, he briefly talked about this about how you see entrances to bus bus shelters um, as seen here. Uh, versus the other way and it, it has to do with the width and meeting ADA um, mm -hmm. regulations which yeah it, which made sense but before that I always wondered why why are why are there these sort of variations here and then on Main Street yeah well yeah I will say for the town hall one like if if this was facing the other way you'd be you know you'd be exiting right, exactly. straight off uh -huh. the curb yeah. off the curb onto the street so when um, they do that, they ought to move the bench forward so you can go around and sit on it, still facing out. Yeah. I tried to do that. My knees yeah. get jammed in, but I mean, yeah. I can't That's see. A point. Yeah. yeah, no, it's true. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I used to wait a lot at this bus stop when I was going, when I was at UMass, and I would often just sit on the planter over here because I like couldn't stand <laughs> sitting under there facing the wrong way. Yeah. Um, so what is uh, members view about uh, uh, this uh, in regards of do you support this to be um, trans uh, clear glass or pattern glass? Um, I, uh, you know, my feelings. <laughs> Girl, yeah, you want patterned. Um, pattern. Yeah. Or, yeah. I think yeah, Jim, I mean, it, it would be visible. You would you would see across the town common to see the other two, which also would be patterned. Yeah. yeah. Okay. And this is a highlight area too, so you'd be getting a lot of sun. Yeah. yeah. There you would really, really be glary. Facing yeah. south. Uh -huh. Yeah. yeah. Right. My again, sorry, I'm not trying to be like devil's advocate on every point. I just my only thought that counters that is to make sure that it's still visible through it through the glass such that if someone is waiting inside and the bus approaches, I mean, presumably no matter what, they'd be able to oh, see that or hear that. it, but yeah. just to make, you know, without having an actual pattern, just to make sure that the visibility, they, there's all different kinds of pattern glass. So, mm -hmm. yeah. Ben, what would happen if we go forward with the North Common re redesign? Yeah, yeah. I was talking to Chris about that and Maureen. Um, I mean, there's still, there's, there's a bus shelter in that redesign. Um, right. And I actually think it's a, this would be a good opportunity to get a shelter that matches the rest of downtown for that. For that so we day. would just maybe move it if we had to, but at least we'd have the shelter. It's not yeah. like move once it's in. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Um, and I think, yeah, it's pretty much in the same location if my memory I think it's down just me. slightly. Yeah. yeah, yeah, but. Um, TBW can move it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, because the pavement's going to be changed and everything. That's what I'm saying. Yeah, thinking, you know, yeah, so. exactly. Okay. So Thank yeah, you. maybe this is one less budget item that we have to include in the, <laughs> in the North Commons yeah. application. Does the introduction of this new shelter with a new bench on a nice concrete platform suggest that that rickety bench that's 15 feet away is going to be torn out um, of the, the one on the common. If you scroll. Oh, here, um, um, yeah. yeah uh, I was assuming that, that that's one, a good yeah. question. That thing. Yeah. yeah. Get rid of that. That's ugly. Yeah. It, yeah. It's, um, or put the shelter there. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, you know, there can be sort of a negotiation of how long the concrete pad could go and if it could include, you know, covering over where those, what do you call them, um, adv valley advocate boxes and the trash and, and maybe a new bench. Mm -hmm. um, but maybe Ben could look into whether um, the DOT could uh, cover a new bench or maybe, so maybe DWRE has a bench. That bench yeah. is the bus stop. So this this bus stop would replace that bench. It yeah. Have to, we don't have to have another bench after the bus stop because this is the bus stop. Right, exactly. Yeah, yeah. true. Yeah. Could be, yeah. 
It would, you know, it'd be nice to maybe push it to the south from the pad on. Also, I don't think this is where the little yellow structure was. It was on the other side. No, no, it was the down lot. further down. It was, it was right. Lot. It was right no, here. It was no, on the no, other no. side of the parking lot. No, oh. it was down north. Oh, it was right there. Sorry, right by the fire hydrant. I, I was it? That. I'm pretty sure it was north of the Spring Street parking lot. No, it was right there by the fire hydrant. Yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Uh -huh. I haven't lived here very yeah. long yet, so thank my, you uh, that's a direction there for a minute. Yeah. So. But yeah, I mean, if we could place it approximately where the bench is now and get rid of that bench, or even move it where he had it, but get rid of the bench, it'd be great. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, that's something we can work out. A lot of clutter that. there. That's for sure. With the yeah. 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 And so this this project would really clean up all all three locations. To, to the to the extent yeah. uh, that that this grant covers yeah. right and you have enough money for all three yeah so um we have money very likely we have money for all three i think part of this process is that i need to get updated quotes for the shelters um and also factor in the money mm -hmm. for the concrete pads um but i think yeah uh i should be able to cover all three okay uh, are there any other questions or comments before the board makes a motion? <clears throat> so uh, we're going to uh, make some, you on a specific motion about the nature of the glass. Uh, is that or yeah, would, would, yeah. That, uh, would that be helpful? Sure. As a recommendation. Uh, okay. Yeah. So um, if I, if I go through my notes. Yeah, it was mostly about um, just the pattern glass for the the two locations around town mm -hmm. and, and then um, and then make it clear at the St. Bridget's location and um, add the lower grid, lower add grid. Lower yep. grid. And, and then Jan, what not. about the uh, the the signage you're proposing that they don't use the uh, uh, information bulletin board? Is that right? By St. Well, Bridges? He wants to put one. I mean, if he can put it on this side and this one, great. If you can do it on both, I think it'd be even better. Although yeah. I don't like the look of it in yeah, okay. Bridges, I think it's true that it's useful and it would make sense yeah. to on both sides of the street. Yeah, that's for sure. You can afford it, Ben. Okay. You can supplement from your pocket, right, Ben? <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> All right. So, okay, so that was for St. Bridget's, uh, clear glass with lower grid with display at St. Bridget's location and if possible across the street. Right. Post office. And then for uh, Spring Street, it would be the patterned glass um, and to clean it up, um, patterned glass and then- No to, grid, right? No, no grid, yep. And- um, either replace the bench or remove the existing bench and place this there if we can move it south but you'll have to look at that again for your measurements mm -hmm. yeah. um, and then let's see here and then for the other one which is on main street it would be pattern no grid oh i um, think you should have the, well i guess lindsay you didn't want to see them both i think you should have the grid personally again that's a that one really needs to be strong because it could get hit by any number of things going through there. Mm -hmm. oh, okay, so with, uh, is everyone on, uh, with grid I'm on just the, pointing yeah. out that it's, it's a stylized um, design and that it's just specific. And so as long as there's an intention to be consistent about using that um, as, an, as kind of the next mm -hmm. layer of design embellishment going forward, then I'm fine with it. I have no issues with it otherwise. Okay. All right. Right. Uh, my, my belief would be that that is not structural in any way, though. The the frame, the, the those diagonals are just more aesthetic, and they're they're probably think, not all that um, structure, structure worthy. But the horizontals. I mean, maybe the odd diagonals. The horizontals aren't there on the ones without it, and that looks to me like it would be structural, right? Mm. Those, it's like that panel. But they're more. It's more like a decorative. Doesn't. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It doesn't. I mean, I guess to a certain extent, if someone like you know backs into the glass with their wheelchair or like or kicks know, it, 
kicks, kicks it or something. Yeah, There's a I little feel bit like of, it adds a layer. I don't know. Yeah. I overbuild though, so yeah. <laughs> it doesn't look that thick. I would but. generally say that if they wouldn't probably manufacture this if it wasn't, you know, without that piece, the, the right. um, if it wasn't structurally sound. So, but again, I have no real issue with that. It's just a. It's almost like they. The more I look at it, it doesn't even look like it's very thick. It almost looks like somebody took tape and put a bunch of grids on it. <laughs> I don't know. You all would know better how. how yeah, have you noticed whether they're metal or plastic? Um, it's metal. Is it okay? Yeah. yeah. Maybe uh, I have a proposal. Maybe if Ben wants to talk to the fabricator um, and and ask if there is, you know. If any it, structural purpose yeah. yeah and if it's not yeah. if it's just an aesthetic um yeah. maybe to be consistent with the other right. ones in the vicinity to not have the grid right. yeah i like it but the pattern class yeah yeah with the pattern. okay so if mm -hmm. structural uh sure yes uh yes for the grid if not then no 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 thanks okay that's good. Okay. All well, right. I think whatever she said, I so move. Right. Oh, are you okay? Jan moves. Is there a second? I second. Okay. Thomas seconded. All in favor? And any further discussion? If not, all in favor? Say mm -hmm. aye. You're technically you have to do a roll call. Yeah, you technically. Oh, I have to do a roll call. Okay. Yeah. Sorry. Okay. Sorry. Okay. All right. Jan. Yes. Okay. Lindsay. Aye. Erica. Aye. Tom. Aye. And Catherine, aye. Okay. All right. Great. Thank you all so much you. for your, for your time so much. advice. Thanks. I appreciate it. Okay. So now I'm going to make Brianna. Um, well, I'll, and I'll, I'll, I'll hang on, hang out for, with for Brianna's presentation too. But. Cool. Uh, can you unshare or stop? Yeah. yeah, thank you. Um, so it's five zero. Okay. All right, Brianna. Hi, everybody. I just learned a lot from that that presentation. So I'll, I'll preface what I'm about to um, to say is that I'm not a planner. I am um, the communications manager and community participation officer for the town. So my background is in communications and technology. Uh, but I luckily have some very talented colleagues, Maureen and Ben, um, who have been helping me through this process. So thank you both. And thank you all the board members for um, being here for our presentation tonight. So, Maureen, should I just launch into the, the, the presentation and pull up the slides and we can yeah. go through there? Okay, just give me one yeah. moment, please. So while she's pulling that up, um, this is being funded through the CARES Act. Uh, and I, I don't know if you officially ordered it or you're, you're going to, and it needs to be purchased by the end of the, this uh, calendar year. Yes, that is the case. Um, so I'll talk a little bit about that. I'm just trying to get oh, okay. my screen up here. Um, so hopefully in just a moment, is everybody able to see my screen? Yeah. And I do want to acknowledge um, to the board that we have our partner from SUFA on this call as well. Um, her name is Lyra, and I'm probably going to butcher her last name. So when, <laughs> when she comes up, I'll let her introduce herself. Um, so she is here to ask, uh, to be able to answer any you know, design or spec questions about um, the solar science in the in the charging cores. Um, Hi everyone, great to meet you. Uh, my name is Lyra Schweitzer. No worries about the last name. Both first and last are tough, but it's great to meet you all. I'm the director of city growth at SUFA, and like Brianna said, I'm happy to answer any questions you may have. Great, and thank you, Lyra, for being here. You get to learn a little bit about. Um, the inner workings of Amherst government. Exactly, so, I'm fun. learning a lot already. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so um, I'll just start by introducing this proj uh, project. We're calling it a one-year pilot program, um, and I'll talk a little bit more about the flexibility of this project in, in a future slide. And I know that we have um, several architects and other design-oriented board members, so I um, welcome we welcome your feedback and your advice um, on this process. So. Let me just kind of launch in here um, a little bit about SUFA signs, what they are, um, also referred to as, um, you know, digital information signs. Uh, basically, how, how we're approaching this project is we were looking for another way for disseminating, a, you know, information to residents in real time um, 
on in a regular year, that would be, you know, on upcoming events, ways to get engaged, um, public works updates, and just general information. Um, in this, this year specifically, we um, found the need to be able to engage with um, particularly our digitally unbanked community members or visitors to the town who aren't connected to us through regular um, channels or not subscribed to our alerts or our social media pages. Um, so the signs will allow us to have an instant flexible messaging tool to push out important information, COVID related or otherwise. Um, Another thing, and I think it was board member Zikos, and I'm sorry if I'm saying that wrong, Erica Zikos, who mentioned um, the desire to have a digital display for transit times. This is another thing that this the, the solar powered signs can accommodate, and we'll talk a little bit more about that. Um, just specifically about uh, working with SUFA, it's a company that's based in Massachusetts. Lyra and her team have actually been out to Amherst and walked the site, so uh, we feel really confident in um, seeing uh, these signs coming up in other communities in Eastern Massachusetts, but also starting to come out here in Western Mass. Um, neighboring communities have also been uh, potentially looking at this sign um, solution. So I will also mention that the company is female owned and led. Everybody who had come out to visit us um, and that I've dealt with in the company has, um, um, you know, indicated that. So. I'm going to say just a little bit more about oh, just some example communities, um, and we'll see some visuals of, of the signs um, in place, but Boston, Malden, Somerville, Everett, Lyra can tell you probably her list of other customers. Um, and just the, a quick takeaway, it's a 30 minute four bolt installation, there's no wires, there's no excavation. Um, the signs themselves will be managed and maintained entirely by SUFA and the content will be managed. Um, by the town. So I'm just going to show this um, example here of the signs themselves. The, the, the first image Malden map is, um, as well as the second and the furthest image on the far right, are of the back of the signs. And that's a customizable um, vinyl overlay that SUFA designers will work with us to create something specific for Amherst. I will say that we um, will be trying to be coming in line with the wayfinding signs so that there's not some visual disruption. Um, we'll, we'll stick to the style guide uh, provided by the local designer. I believe it was Seth Gregory who's working on the wayfinding signs, which I'm sure board members have already seen. Uh, the, the third image where you see neighborhood news feed is a, basically an e-ink screen, similar to what you would see um, on, on a Kindle. And the different squares um, allow for us to manage and present content um, on them. So there, I'll let maybe Lyra say a little bit more about this. I don't know if Lyra, if you wanna pop in in terms of, yeah. I've, he I've heard board members um, concern about extra um, lighting in town. So could you talk a little bit about the, the visual or light impact of the of the screen. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for bringing that up. Um, so as, as Brianna already mentioned, um, the sign screen is made out of e-ink. So what's great about that is that it's not backlit at all. There's no light coming out of it. So it doesn't contribute to any kind of light pollution in the town. For all of you guys who have used a Kindle, I'm sure you know, you know, you need to have a light in order to read it. Um, so that's a little bit about the actual hardware. And then in terms of, um, you know, what's showing on the screen itself, it actually was really important to us when we were designing the project product that it was a black and white screen so that it wouldn't be this kind of like flashing LED commercial billboards that you might see in some other cities, but that it really resembles more of a front page newspaper for whatever neighborhood it's in. And for that reason, we have different content blocks with different types of information. So under local updates, that'll be information showing from Amherst at all times. So whenever people walk by the sign, they'll see something that's been posted by the town. Um, we also have a box for local business advertising. And then we have customizable tweets on the right-hand side of the screen there where Brianna's sort of showing her arrow. Thank you for that. And so the, depending on where the sign is located, that can be you know either real-time transit updates if it's near a bus stop, it can show uh, tweets from the town. Um, it can have an events calendar. Um, it can have a polling feature where you know people can submit questions to citizens and you can text in responses. So there's a lot of different applets we have and it is just heavily customizable to whatever place in the town it is. 
Thank you, Lyra. Um, so next we, we have a little bit of a look at the structural plan of the signs themselves. And I apologize if this is not super clear. Uh, I'm not sure if you received this in, in your packet, but I can make sure it's available. Um, but here you're seeing the display that Lyra just described, um, as well as you get a view of um, from the side, which we don't see in those earlier pictures, and where the solar panel itself sits is at the top of the, um, the sign. And again, this is a, a four bolt, um, 30 minute or so installation. And um, that, that would actually be done by SUFA themselves, but over, overseen by our inspections team, our planners, and our public works um, director. So, I mean, this is a little bit more um, context. Oops, let me just... Uh, a little bit about why we are, are looking to um, have these signs for Amherst right now. And Maureen mentioned earlier um, about the CARES opportunity. We, we do see this as an opportunity to um, keep our community members informed, whether they're um, already keyed into our other um, avenues of information or they're visitors to the town or they perhaps um, are you know utilizing our human services or, or something of that um, of that ilk? So another key piece I'll, I'll draw your attention to is um, in support of local business. So the signs um, we see the signs as an asset to our local business community and economy right now, especially um, who are being drastically impacted by COVID nineteen by offering free advertising for local businesses, local restaurants, um, and the dedicated portion of the e-ink screen. You did see a little bit of a view there um, in the bottom left corner of the um, of one of the signs that's going to be a dedicated portion um, for local businesses to, to utilize. And we, uh, we're looking at this as kind of a, a pilot approach um, to see if it's the right fit for our community. And I mentioned this earlier, but the, the custom, um, the back design is entirely customizable. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about how many signs we're looking at, but each sign could have um, a different design, um, not in terms of style, but in terms of content. So we can have different ones for different locations as, a, as an option. And we, we haven't gotten to that um, point yet, but um, we, we are planning to have them in line with the wayfinding style guide. All right, you have to forgive me because I can't see my screen. Um, so I talked a little bit about this um, project being flexible for us. Um, we, we would be entering into a license agreement for one year for the signs to test them out. Um, at any point that we felt that they weren't working out or we love them and we want more, we have that opportunity. Um, the easy install allows us to relocate or um, to, to a more desirable location if the initial um, decision that we made isn't appropriate or remove them altogether if needed. Um, we've also been talking about a staggered installation option. Maureen mentioned that we'd have to be able to spend the money before the end of the year. It doesn't mean that we have to have the signs cited and in place before the end of the year. So it allows us more time to show you what the back designs would look like. Um, it also gives us time to fine tune the locations. And today we will look a little bit about some of the locations that we propose for both the signs and the charging cores, which you'll learn a little bit more about next. Um, and either way, the, the solar, solar charging cores, which you're about to see, will be ours to keep. Um, they're also very easy to remove and move around to different areas based on demand or need. So a little bit about the charging cores, and I will show you an actual visual of that coming up next. But if you see in the, the top right of your screen, you've got some um, dimensions of the charging core. Here is the, the actual solar panel, and here are the USB charging points uh, ports where community members or visitors could connect and charge um, their device. And we find that this is really important, particularly with um, the shelter this year coming down to the, um, the UU church. There's a high congregation area there of our community members. Um, and you'll see in later slides why uh, we've tried to propose a location close to that particular um, church. Um, so we hope to offer our community members access to, to 
you know, this charging points to keep their devices charged, stay connected to important information, whether that's public health information or just online resources for them to go about their day. Um, especially, this has become especially important with the closure of our public buildings, um, specifically the library was in town hall. Um, often people would come in there to use the Wi-Fi or to charge their device and they're no longer an option. Um, another another way um, another reason for this this particular project is we're hoping to bridge th that digital divide and provide more equitable access to power sources to um, some of our more vulnerable community members. And it gets cut off here, so I just want to um, mention that if you see on the bottom here um, about the finish, you'll see the actual charging core in just a moment. Um, but the fasteners, stainless steel, the finish, zinc and polyester powder coated. So I will show you what that actually looks like. Um, Lyra can probably say where this photo was taken, but I, I think it was somewhere in maybe Boston. Um, so you see that there's a bench element to the, the charging core that we will not be getting. We will just be focusing on the charging core itself. Um, so that's what it looks like in place. Um, and our hopes are to have it be adjacent to existing um, benches in town. Sitting here, I supposed to be franchise player, and we are talking about that. We sitting here, I supposed to be franchise player, and we are talking about that. We sitting here. Hang on. Okay. I don't know whose that is. It's not. Catherine, could you mute? I think yours is making sound. It's, it's already done. It's okay. Sorry. Okay. Um, all right, so I'm going to zoom to the next uh, slide where we can, the series of slides where we talk about potential locations. Um, so we're focusing on downtown Amherst. We are looking at potentially three solar signs and three charging cores. Um, throughout this process, we're trying to be mindful of the existing signage in town. And I think some of you referred to um, lovingly as the hodgepodge, which um, I also feel I also live in Amherst. Um, for, for almost 17 years. So I'm very mindful of the um, pollution, extra hodgepodge, we're, we're looking to not contribute to that. Um, and I've also been working with, you know, planning and inspection services, DPW, to keep be in mind of um, infrastructure, ADA and other standards. And um, the last point is that we're trying to plan around and with the upcoming wayfinding signs um, and their locations and their designs. Brianna, were these some of the ones we saw in the original proposal for wayfinding? There were some lighted signs that had information. Is that part of it, or is this additional to that? I these are these are different. I think okay. I, I think in Seth's original like proposal for the wayfinding systems, there was informational kiosks, right? But that that was I think years ago. Um, he oh, and that's gone. Yeah. Um, yeah, that would be like the that would be phase two of the wayfinding okay. system. If if so and this when we might get, yeah. help for a while. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Thanks. Thank you, Ben. I'm glad you stuck around. Uh, so I, I first have um, an overview of locations, which I think we can refer back to. Um, that might be helpful to see everything plotted out. But um, I have some images of the locations that I I've walked with Sufa, and then after that rewalked with planning um, with planning staff and have some slight tweaks to the original proposed location. So I'd love to launch um, into those now. So we'll be seeing um, several potential locations for signs and several potential locations for cores. They um, are not necessarily need to be together. Uh, they're separate elements. So I'll just launch into that first. Um, one of the first proposed locations and again, it's not exactly specific. You'll see a heart here, um, but we, again, will be citing them for optimal um, compliance with ADA and other, and other obstruction um, considerations. So this is just a general um, idea of where we would have one of the signs. And here on the right side, you see, here on the right side, you see a little bit um, better of where we would potentially cite that. The, the um, other location that we offered is um, diagonally adjacent from the one that you just saw um, at Amity Street on the corner there. Again, there, um, 
Ben could say more about this there. We were conscious of wayfinding signs that are also planned for this location when we um, discussed this as a potential option. The other um, two locations, uh, one of them Ben mentioned in his presentation, you'll see that on the right hand side, although I'm not sure I have the same view as him and the same fancy PowerPoint skills. Um, but the mm -hmm. idea was to, you know, hopefully have these adjacent to transit locations whenever possible, just to have that integration of scheduling for the PVTA, especially at sites that don't, um, that aren't planning to have the display sign as part of the new shelter that's coming on board. On the left, um, going back to the hodgepodge of, of some elements downtown, you probably are all familiar with this. <laughs> I don't know if it's a modern art installation or, or what is actually going on, but we've got this um, concrete block with a, a steel post coming out of it. Um, we've, we've all scratched our heads over this one at one point or another, um, but that is also a potential um, location that would be well suited for the signs in terms of traffic, um, but would also mean that we'd get to remove that. I mean, that's the idea. Um, and we'd be working with public works to determine if that's a possibility. So those are the um, four general locations that we've proposed for the for the sign. Again, they they do not need um, they don't require any um, you know electrical needs or um, if there are any you know site optimization or site improvements, small site improvements that need to be made, uh, an adjustment of a concrete pad. Um, Public Works is also a partner in this project and will be um, able to to make the necessary improvements if needed. So um, a little bit about the cores. Again, this is going to be in downtown Amherst. We're trying to look um, to keep them in proximity to those high ridership transit stops that, that Ben mentioned in his presentation, um, as, well as, as, as well as the outside of the Jones Library, which you'll see in just a moment. And similar to the signs, um, it's a, an easy four bolt installation, highly movable um, if the need arises. So one of the locations that we've identified um, for the same reason that, you know, it's a contender for a, a new bus shelter is um, out front of St. Bridget's Parish. Um, we've identified a space in between the benches where the core would actually um, sit between. And I believe Ben um, actually went out and measured it to make sure that it wasn't considered uh, a loss of space for, for a wheelchair and, and the space is too narrow to be considered um, an appropriate space for a wheelchair to go. So the next location we have, um, you'll see this picture is a little dated. Um, a couple of weeks ago, those planters are no longer there. Um, but the other location that we propose is out front of Jones Library, especially talking with uh, library di director Sharon Sherry, who identified, um, you know, how many community members use the library as their touch point to both technology and to, to charge their devices. We thought it might be appropriate to um, cite one of them there. And these next two photos are actually of two um, adjacent bench sets. Um, sort of across from, I guess, the Greenfield Savings Bank, you can see in the left picture in front of what used to be BART's, which I'm told is no longer BART's. So, um, but we're, we've been calling them the BART bench uh, location. Um, the idea would be that this would be the closest optimal spot in terms of um, access to appropriate um, solar capacity, but also um, nearing the UU church, which is another high congregation point of community members. Um, particularly in the daytime, and now will be host to the 24-7 um, shelter for this season. Okay, so I, um, myself and Lyra and, and both Ben and Maureen, thankfully enough, um, will be available to hear your feedback, questions, or comments. Do you have any mock-ups of what it'll look like that match the wayfinding system of what, what they're going to visually have? Not, not yet. Um, I'm working with, um, I hope to be working with Ben on getting um, access to some of those um, style elements. I know the wayfinding signs are still being finalized, um, which is why we 
we proposed for this project a kind of a staggered um, a staggered implementation, so to speak, where we would move forward with the cores ideally for this season. Um, and then that would allow us more time for the, the, the back design of the signs for installation in early spring. Um, so I would imagine at some point we would probably be coming back to you for specifically to look at proposed designs for the back, um, the back vinyl overlays that, that'll be um, made for, for Amherst. I, I'm sure we could come up with like a, a mock-up um, based off of that style guide that, that we could show, um, or we could actually show you the, the real designs when we're in that process that's based off of the style guide and come back to, come back to the board. So that blue um, graphic that's sort of like a folded sheet behind the news feed section, that's not pre-screened on the, that's not required. Lyra. Okay. Oh, no, that's not. So that's fully customizable. So that's not in the front. It's like a sticker, basically. Okay. Um, that's I figured it matched the Mulder one, but I thought, you know, maybe they all come that way. <laughs> yeah, exactly. No, no, no. Yeah, that's the front and the back. That's exactly right. Doesn't match our wayfinding system no. at all. So, okay. Great. Thanks. It can be your colors. Yeah. And we that would be um, one of our main goals for consistency with those with those signs. Um, the other, you see on the far right here, there's um, something that's a little bit, and I don't know how well this plays in with their their style guidelines, because I'm not sure which community it is, but they've chosen to put up, you know, more topical information um, related to the pandemics. I mean, so that's also um, an, an option, but still being in, li in line with the style guide that's presented with the wayfinding signs. The, um, the side panel also can be customized, I believe, Lyra. That's right, yeah. And, or it could be left um, with, with no color on it, so. Yeah, that's right. So that skin can be replaced as many times as necessary. Like the one on the far right is temporarily over whatever they usually have. Yeah, that, that's right. We usually update it. We can update it around once every three months uh, just to make sure it's timely and relevant and also matching with the season that we're in. And, and then I, oh, go ahead. Oh, no, go ahead, please. Oh, I was just gonna say, I, I have a couple of questions if I could. Um, I, I'm appreciative that you, first of all, gave a really nice and thorough presentation. Thank you. Um, I feel like I have a good sense of what these look like and how they'll be maintained. Um, but I also recognize that we're all feeling that there's a lot of um, your, your hodgepodge comment, um, kind of a, an aesthetic chaos um, downtown. And these, you know, we've just made a decision to go with a, a Victorian style bus shelter and we're introducing a whole new signage system um, that's aiming to, um, provide some consistency throughout town. And this is introducing something very contemporary and normally this would be my go-to. Um, it's, it's clean, um, it's efficient. I, I rather like its form, but I'm not sure that it's gonna find a home here in Amherst um, just because of the everything else. Um, that's already contributing to the aesthetic of downtown. Um, that said, I, I do wonder if um, if the cores, if we if, if, do, can we do just the cores and provide that service to people downtown, a charging station, um, and not do the signs? Is that a possibility in the contract? Curious about that. I'm also curious about after the pilot year. Um, is the cost to the town um, for an ongoing contract something that um, justifies uh, the information that people could get when we've just introduced a whole new signage system that's about wayfinding? Do we need another set of maps, for example? And then my last question for now is, um, with regards to the, the newspaper um, information on the front, um, how you mentioned that like the tweets are customizable, but do we have to go with that language? Like, do we run the risk of not being timely uh, or not feeling appropriate for the town if we're calling things official information tweets? I don't, I'm, 
a little concerned about that. Okay, no, thank you. Um, so I'm just going to go back to the, the first question about the consistency, you know, the contemporary versus Victorian clash. Um, I wonder if it'd be helpful for us to maybe put a, an example of the sign, but in place with Amherst in the background to kind of get a sense of how, how, how jarring that might actually be when it's, when, when you see it with, with, within the context of downtown Amherst. And I'm sure that we could probably um, come up with that if that's helpful. Um, the second question about just purchasing the cores, um, you know, I think that that's certainly one way for us to go. I think it would change the, the nature of the project. And I don't know if that would preclude us from being eligible for the CARES funding that we've been approved by the state to use. Um, it's something we can certainly, certainly explore. And, you know, the idea, the way that we hope to implement this is, you know, charging cores first, just based off of necessity and need and, and season. Um, and then be able to be more thoughtful about the, the sign placements, um, you know, giving a little bit of buffer time for the fact that we probably won't want to install these as the snow has already started to fly, but maybe start that back in, in early spring, but give us um, the buffer through this board and as well as um, town council to be able to review those kind of bigger questions that might not be able to be resolved in terms of the design, the contemporary feel of the signs. And the last question. Customizability about the, the, the news feed. Um, is there a, a, a fixed template that we have to abide or can all of the text on that news feed be? So that might be a time for Lyra to come in about the, the way that that's managed. Definitely. So the everything you see on the screen is basically totally customizable by the town. So if you don't want tweets showing, for example, we could take out the Twitter applet. Um, it, it can shoot, you know, the updates box there is for the town to upload on our online platform. And the whole idea is like, it's, you know, it's the same ease of putting in new information into the world as um, uh, social media or Facebook, for example, but it's then showing in the outdoors, uh, which is great for people who might not be following this town otherwise on social media channels. So really the, um, the extent to which the content is fresh depends a little bit on how much the town is posting. And because of that, we try to include some other applets that also automate and pull uh, other sources of local up-to-date town information. Um, so it's not as reliant on the town, you know, uploading information, but certainly if there's concerns about that, we can, you know, not have certain apps showing. And, and I will say that um, I haven't gotten too much of a look at it yet, but I mentioned earlier my, um, my background being technology and the communications. Um, they offer us a you know a cloud-based platform for be able to be able to go in and push those um, local updates. You see it now. I imagine that we'd be able to call that something else um, through the solution and be able to push out timely alerts. Let's say you know that something that's an emergency, we have a great emergency communication platform that people can subscribe to. But again, for those people who aren't subscribed, they'd, we'd be able to use that as, um, you know, an information push, especially in, in emergency situations. And, and we can, our team, our engineering team is really nimble. So we build a lot of custom app for town. So for example, if you have this emergency alert, that's already a texting thing, we can take that text usually and have it showing on the sign as just another place to show automatically. Um, and if you don't mind as well, I'm happy to speak a little bit to your concern about the historic feel and maybe feeling a bit out of place. This is definitely something we've encountered before um, in other towns and cities we work with. You know, the, the most recent example being, um, we have been installed now in Brookline, Massachusetts for about a year. I don't know if you guys are familiar with Brookline or not, but it's also a very historic town um, where people care a lot about the aesthetic. And you know, there were some concerns before the signs went in. And for your reference, we have 24 signs in Brookline. So it really is high impact in the town. Um, and it's actually, I think, why it's our most engaged town. You know, people use the signs a lot. But what we did is we basically took the feedback from the community and we created a design that was super Brookline. Like we have sketches of some of their most historic landmarks on the vinyl. We have historic facts about Brookline Incorporated. So we can really make it look, I know it's hard to visualize now, but um, we can certainly try to mock up something to just help you visualize like it can be cohesive and there's a lot of room to play with the sort of vinyl branding there. 
I want to just um, kind of add to that that I don't I I think that there's a lot of potential from what you're describing what we're seeing to make it make this type of aesthetic work in downtown but part of what um, I'm sensing and and perhaps kind of following up on Erica's point is that we've seen a number of different types of signage come before the board over the last couple of years. And so it's difficult to respond specifically to this um, in, it, in isolation when there's been these other points of proposals that have been made that have very different aesthetics. And so without knowing where those went, I think it's difficult for the board, or at least for myself, to be able to advise on taking a very different approach to something that we've seen another version of that looks very different and really haven't gotten updates on where that went. Um, and kind of coming back to Erica's point that it, not only have we seen kind of other versions of this in the past that are very different aesthetically, there's also proposals of wayfinding signage and um, uh, I guess mainly that wayfinding signage that's just is very uh, that will be throughout the town as well that will be a very very different aesthetic and so while I think this in isolation could be adapted to work in downtown it's this with all the other pieces that have kind of come before the board um, and it's a question of how those get kind of synchronized or brought together um, that I, I think is kind of beyond perhaps what you can address um, is more of a discussion that the town needs to respond to, perhaps, or guide us in. Definitely, thanks for that context. Yes, thank, thank you, Lindsay. And I, again, I, I hate to rely on the fact that I'm, I'm not a planner, but that is definitely something that I could um, work with the planning department on trying to pull together, together a more cohesive look of what's been presented to you in the past, because I, um, I just don't have that information or that history myself. Um, right. I think it's kind of like a master plan type of view that we'd be looking to gain. I think Tom had a question. Did you, Tom? I... Tom needs to leave for his planning board meeting. Right. I think he's yeah. still here. He might have just left. Oh, did he? I thought maybe. Yeah, he I actually. <clears throat> Apologies to him. I'll send him an email. I, I uh, meant to mention at the beginning of the meeting that he had a planning board meeting at 630. Okay. So, and actually, I, I also need to leave at 630. Yeah, yeah, and, and you as well. Um, so, well, Brianna, one of the questions I asked you first was whether we could see these mocked up with our wayfinding way style. And I think that's pretty much what everybody's saying is we just can't imagine how they're going to fit and we want to know where the wayfinding signs are are in planning. So perhaps come back to us with these, with the wayfinding um, design mocked onto them. Um, and I would say that just from what the bus things we did, they should be the plain black, the simplest, you know, so that they look the most like the bus shelters. But so we have some sense because none of these look like they would they would look good in our town. And, and we just need that context in order to make a decision, I think. Yeah. yeah. I would agree because one of the major concerns that I hear from people is there's a lot of stuff in downtown Amherst. You know, we paint the transformer boxes. Uh, we've got the wayfinding. We have the welcome to Amherst signs. Uh, and there's right just here. a lot going on. And uh, so I think we personally, I think we need to see something that would look more and keeping and fit into the personality of Amherst. And maybe you can do that, but I think we need more, more time or we need more, uh, more developed presentation personally. Anybody else have any comments on this? Um, yes, Erica. I, I do, I guess um, I am wondering what the, my colleagues on the board feel about the cores. Um, I am curious about, I'm assuming that the color is customizable. We saw an image of a, one that was bright red. Um, but if, if, the, if the cores can be contractually disaggregated from the signs, and that's something that could move ahead before the snow flies, so to speak, um, is that something that 
we'd be willing to support um, or is, yeah. Uh, so, I mean, I can put my, um, you know, perspective on this is it would probably, it would probably be hard for us to separate the two projects and have it still be um, viable under the, what the contract is now and what the, um, the approval that we received for the funds was um, in large part due to the, the fact that we'd be able to have this uh, additional method of communicating um, emergent or changing, evolving information, um, public health information in our community. So I think um, that would certainly um, impact the viability of the project moving forward. Um, Are these customizable? So the the color um, is is a standard color. The the for the for the charging core, um, I'd welcome Lyra. She has anything to add to that. But as far as I understand, that the the color itself is is just one color. Yeah, it is currently one color. That being said, I can definitely ask our um, operations team if it's possible to, to customize it. So what's the uh, pleasure of the group? Uh, shall we? Well, I really hate to do this, Brianna, because I know you put a lot of work into this presentation, but I'd love you to go back to Chris and talk to her about the wayfinding system and coordinate um, um, a presentation to us that incorporates what that's going to be into this. I'm certainly happy to do that. Um, as far as I, and I, I'd have to get a sense from the planner, so Maureen or Ben, feel free to, yeah. to chime in here. I don't know what that timeline and what that process is and where where they're at, if, if it's possible for us to um, do something like that in, the, in, in relative um, short order. Sure. We, well, we can oh, certainly right, set Maureen up, a, we can certainly set up a, um, a meeting with um, Chris, Ben, myself, and, and you, Brianna, to yeah. strategize and, and take, a, take a look at what, what the, um, what, where we're at with the wayfinding signs. I know Seth and Ben have been working um, to update it based on the DRB comments from the last meeting. Yeah. And yeah. Um, sorry, if I may, Brianna, I'm just curious. The... Um, and for Lyra as well, like if we need to spend the money ASAP, um, like the 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 branding on the back, the core the coordination we do with the wayfinding signs, like that's a sticker that that just gets put on the sign itself. So, you know, I think if the board is okay with the idea of the signs themselves, and you need to purchase them um like we could spend time designing the sticker and the design after the fact um just just to separate those i uh steps as well um but i i don't i don't mean to in introduce too many new ideas but just just that came to mind and thank you for clarifying ben um i'm sorry if i cut out before my my internet for some reason is is not stable um at the moment yeah, so the the idea is obviously there. We have um, a deadline to use this money. You know, I hate to say use it or lose it, and that shouldn't be dr driving our you know design choices. However, um, the the whole the, the crux of the project is to kind of um, meet an immediate need, um, and and that's um, how we're 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 trying to approach that, but also be conscious of the time and you know effort it takes to make sure that it's something that fits in our community. So with our staggered approach, um, that would allow us many, many months to kind of work and tweak the design so that it's um, appropriate for Amherst and appropriate to the standards that we've set um, with existing signage coming through. What was the date for your, did you have to start spending? Um, well, you know, if your CARES funding must be, um, you know, it, anything that's going to be attributed to, to CARES funding needs to be um, used up by the end of December. Okay. And we've been working on this, um, you know, in terms of the specifics um, for, for a while um, now, you know, waiting for the approval from the state to even say that we could use the funds, which then we were able to start the, the process of discovery. Um, but we are able to, you know, purchase the, both the cores and the signs and then 
stagger them and have that um, extra time to focus on the design. And here's a question. When you talk about it as a pilot, what are we piloting? Public opinion, usage? Like what's the metric for success here? If, you know, if a few people show up at town hall and say, we think they're not very good looking, or if you don't observe people using them, like how do we know that it's a successful pilot? Are there measures in place? Um, because I presume that there is a cost to the town after the pilot period to continue the contract for maintenance um, and, and um, digital upkeep and things like that. So how do we know? Yeah, I'm happy to speak to that. Um, so we have a lot of metrics actually that we use to evaluate the success of the pilot and whether you know it's a good idea to renew on both sides, both for the town and for SUFA. Um, a few things that we look at in terms of engagement with the signs is we look at how many people are texting in responses to the polls, how many different organizations and local businesses are signing up to the signs, how many times are they posting. Um, a lot of times we have quite qualitative feedback as well. Exactly as you said, we take in account of feedback from multiple different stakeholders in the city, You know, whether it's a design review board or if you have a pedestrian committee. Um, or the Chamber of Commerce is usually a really active partner of ours, as well as businesses um, getting some data in terms of like, did posting on the sign lead to lift for them uh, to events or to their storefronts? Um, and then, you know, we kind of evaluate on the town side, like, did, was this an effective mode of communication for them? How many different departments are using the signs regularly to post? Um, how many times are their content being seen? We also, one thing that, you know, we didn't go into too much detail in, in this uh, meeting is that we do have a pedestrian data with a sensor that can sort of also provide data on how many people are walking by the sign um, and the activity levels around that. Um, so those are some of the metrics we look at. And then in terms of costs, that's a good question. Because we are advertising supported, um, usually beyond the pilot, we don't have to uh, have any costs again, but that would again be something we would look at like how much advertising were we able to make on the signs? And then um, that's another metric that we use to evaluate, like what would the cost of the pilot extension be? I don't like the idea of having business advertising on them myself. So, I mean, if that's required in order to maintain, I don't know. No, I agree. Yeah, I, actually we would have to um, talk with the building commissioner about, about that as well. Um, I think would, that's would a QR code be readable um, on that because of the way that the, the text is ink? Yep, yeah. A lot of people use QR codes on our signs. Okay, I was just thinking of something like we're about to install our writer's walk and it'd be nice to advertise on those that it exists, but you wouldn't want to put the map and all the information. So if there were a QR code to go with it, somebody could then get the information off of the yeah, absolutely. And we can also tell you how many times it's been scanned and things like that. So uh, what is the board's sense of, you know, doing a mock-up based on the wayfinding signs um, could take some time um, just as the holidays are approaching. Um, it, it feels like, sure, you know, it's just the beginning of November. Maybe, maybe there could be a mock-up um, done in the next month or so. Um, you know, do it in a couple of days, right? Sure. Yeah. Uh, maybe. Yeah. I, I guess it depends on everyone's workload and um, other deadlines. Um, but yeah, I, I think that a very preliminal uh, mock-up could be done um, by the end of by probably by December, uh, the beginning of December uh, for the board's review. Would that? Do you think that would work with your timeline, Brianna, um, to ensure that? Um, can be sorry to interrupt, Maureen, do you, I, I apologize for needing to leave, but do you need anything from me before I go? Okay. I Thank you very much. Good Thanks. luck with everything. Thanks. Thanks, um, Lindsay. So one thing, I mean, if, if we're already working, and again, I don't know what stage or process planning is at with, with the designer, mm -hmm. um, Seth Gregory, I mean, it could be something that we ask the designer to do. We provide him with um, maybe an image of the sign and ask the designer to mock it up since then we know that it will be consistent with style guide and wayfinding. Uh, we've worked with uh, Seth Gregory in the past. So um, again, I, I don't want to um, be able to say that is an option without discussing it maybe with Ben or, or, or the planners, but it could be something that because he's already actively yeah. um, 
working yeah, on the signs? Yeah, already has, um, you know, the, the, what were they, the kiosks that were part of the design proposal. It seems to me he could practically just lay one of those over and start to show us what they'd, they'd look like. He's really quick and good. Yeah. 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 I mean, I'm curious if the, if the board supports the idea of like a, a map on the back or w would you rather just a straight just like you know d d some sort of design with like maybe the town seal or something oh i think um, it should be usable space otherwise why stick that big thing in the middle of the road if it's not going to both sides be usable right i definitely agree i okay. have a question does the board feel that you need to see a mock-up in order to provide your recommendations or do you feel at this point that you could say Brianna, order the signs, and we'll we'll develop the these designs together uh, with with consultation from Seth and, and the planners and, and other departments. Is Erica still here? Did she leave? Who? Erica. Oh, yeah. yeah. I don't think you, oh, Eric, Eric, you don't yeah, feel yeah. that way, do you? I'm sorry. I think I missed the question. So, do you feel like you just can't make any recommendations tonight? Whether uh obviously you would for the design you would need to see a mock-up mm -hmm. but for this as a overall project do you feel that you are supportive of these signs to be purchased or do you feel like you need to just take a pause until a mock-up is shown well for me uh as uh, jan mentioned this if this becomes a commercial bulletin board for businesses uh, that's uh, a no-go for me. And I don't, I doubt if the select board would approve of it either. If, if we're gonna have something that noticeable, um, I think it should be fully news worthy. Um, sure. But on the other hand, you're talking about that supporting it uh, means uh, advertising. And uh, uh, I don't, I can't, personally support that concept, but mm -hmm. maybe others do, but I can't imagine that the town would go for that either. Yeah, we would have to take a look at the zoning bylaw to see if that's allowed um, as a start as a starting point. Right. Um, and then and then talk to yeah, I think you really need to run this by a few people that have mm -hmm. some authority and, and voice in how we would have something like that all over the place. Sure. All right. So Catherine, Catherine makes a good point. And I also think that if um, putting a pause on this um, to work on the design of the um, adhesive information on the uh, opposite side, if putting a pause on it essentially means it's not going forward and it's not really, it's not really a decision. Um, that we're making, if, if pausing means no, because we're not going to make the December deadline. I, I am very reluctant to ask a designer to do work for free in a hurry. Um, it just doesn't seem fair to Seth Gregory, who is a professional, because he has the information kind of at the ready doesn't mean that he has the time and it doesn't mean that he should be compensated for doing the work. Um, well, I thought you said you were already working with him. I didn't, is he not contracted for this already? Uh, he's working on the wayfinding signs. Um, mm -hmm. we, the, we, the, there could certainly be a conversation with um, Chris Brestrup with Seth um, uh, con regarding the their established contract. Um, I don't know if, if this would be an added fee or, or the, those sorts of conversations of um, whether this could be um, included in his scope. Um, I mean, these are all very valid um, comments and concerns. Um, you know, it sounds like what, here's my suggestion is that staff um, have an internal meeting and see what is feasible um, time-wise, money-wise, and CARES Act wise, and if we are able to move forward with providing a mock design, I'll, we'll go ahead and do that and, and schedule a DRB meeting as, as quickly as possible. Um, does, that, does that satisfy yeah. everyone's needs? Yeah, that's better. Yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. I think clarification. And, you know, maybe, maybe staff could take, you know, Seth's vision and um, maybe we could internally work on it if, if there is a sort of time constraint or, you know, or what have you with Seth. Um, so it would be interesting if we all sort of took a look at the family of signs um, and taking a look at the font. Yeah. Uh, and the coloring and the layout, um, and see what we could, what we could cook up, or maybe Seth cooks up. Yeah. Yeah. And I think and then maybe refer to the original wayfinding uh, family of signs um, for the informational signs. So maybe that could be a sort of inspiration as well. But I would strongly urge that we you see if this is even yeah pos permit possible because yeah. of the commercial nature of the sign mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah i mean I'm, to me yeah we're gonna do it we're gonna do it right so yeah. it's well, all very valid um, after the pilot year by having advertising then i would really have problems with that yeah, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. yeah. all right um, well uh yeah. Bri brianna sorry so what are your thoughts on this sort of uh, evolving plan no i think it's valid to want to see it um consistently with with what the designs are going to be for the wayfinding and I was in by by no means suggesting that we um, ask someone to do work for free um, and so if I can be I would can be helpful in mocking something up I'm not a graphic designer uh, by trade but if we have access to those assets um, for the the paid work that we are receiving then maybe we can have something um, to, to at least get a sense of, of what that would look like um, yeah so I think that that makes sense. Okay. And and I will I, I want to just reiterate to the, the the fact about the local business um, and how you know for this because of um, COVID that they would be this would be a tool for local businesses to support the local economy. Um, again, after that first year, we would have a, a point where we would assess whether or not we would move forward with the science. And again, if we can think about this as more of a um, I know that this is a design review board, but uh, um, our approach is really how we can, what we can do in this next year to support both um, proper communication with various populations in our town while also supporting local businesses. Um, and then we have that decision point to come in at the end of the year to say, did this work? Is this a good fit? And you know, if, if it's not, then, then we will not have, um, hopefully not have done you know, permanent damage to the street that it's bolted into or, or things like that, something mm -hmm. that's not fixable. Um, and I, I know that this at, at least um, has has support of, of our town manager who's really conscious of being able to add, have another tool for, for local business. Um, and it is, I can't tell you what the percentage of the screen is that's dedicated to the business piece. Um, so I, 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 I know that, um, you know, bids and chambers who, who work with um, these signs, it's, it's been something that's very, very beneficial to them um, and hasn't, and maybe, maybe if, you, if you've seen one in, in person, it doesn't seem as commercial, but there's a, a, you know, a small business element to it. So I'll just say that, but I, I am conscious of that concern as well. Okay. Maureen, do you think you have enough from us to move yeah. on? Okay. Yes. Okay. Well so let me just continue with the agenda and to see if it's over the minutes I, I didn't do them sorry yeah, right <laughs> if see anybody from the public that wanted to make a comment do I, don't, I don't think that there are, are that there all right. are okay. the public. all right so can i hear a motion that we adjourn do we need next meeting date well um we'll, we'll wait, wait to hear from you when you wait to see yeah yeah we can wait to see yeah um, that being said i know time we're kind of running late and we could handle this via email. Um, I was kind of wondering if we could, we do meet as needed. So maybe we could just keep with that. But I was kind of thinking, did we kind of want to develop a standard? Uh, we talked about that, but then we decided that. Yeah, uh, it's hard. You know, yeah, we really can respond to proposals as they come. Yeah. I move to adjourn. Okay, thank you. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starving. <laughs> Dame. Dame. Okay. All right. Nice seeing you all. <laughs> Thanks, Jan. Okay. Bye. Thank you all for your okay. time. And thank all you, right. Lyra. Okay. Thank you. Bye, everybody. Bye. <laughs> Thanks, everybody.